I was trying to solve this terrible puzzle that confronted me for and many other people about how it was that human beings got themselves in such a tangle about what they believed such a tangle that we were pointing the ultimate weapons of destruction at one another which by the way we are still doing and I thought okay well I understand that we need our belief systems they orient us and that means there will be conflict between belief systems and that can be a catastrophe and that's being played out everywhere again in very many ways what's the solution to that well one possibility is there's no solution it's just mayhem all the way around could be the case but it seemed to me as I delved into it that the proper solution to that was to live properly as an individual because you're more powerful than you think way more powerful than you think I mean God only knows what you are in the final analysis you're blind to your own weaknesses but you're also blind to your own strengths and so then I think well if you got your act together it'd be better for you and instantly it would be better for your family assuming they wanted you to get your act together and not everyone does but and then it would be better for the community it's like how far could you take that if you stopped wasting time and if you stopped lying and if you oriented yourself to to the highest possible good that you could conceive of and you committed to that how much good could you do well I would say why don't you find out So, that's what I think you should do. You should find out. You don't have anything better to do. And there's nothing in it, as far as I've been able to tell, there's nothing in it but good. So, maybe you could sort yourself out so that you wanted nothing but the good. And, and then maybe you could help make that manifest in the world. And maybe we wouldn't have all these terrible problems then. At least we'd have fewer of them and that would be a start. So, it's, the, it's the, the answer to the problem of humanity is the, is, the, is the integrity of the individual. That's the answer. So, and states that are predicated on that realization are healthy. So, and states that aren't are doomed to stagnation and catastrophic collapse. And personalities that are predicated on Self-tyranny and the tyranny of others are doomed and doomed to collapse. So, and then you think, well, what's the barrier? And the barrier is, are you willing to accept the responsibility? And part of the answer to that is, reduce the damn responsibility until it's tolerable. You don't have to fix everything at once. You could just start by fixing the things that you could fix. Or you could even do it more... You could do it with even less self-sacrifice. You could start by fixing only the things that you want to fix. God, you can get a massive way that way. So, do it. See what happens. That's what you should have been taught in university, right from the beginning. It's like, aim at the highest good. Tool yourself into something that can attain it. And go out there and manifest it in the world. And everything that, everything that comes your way will be... Everything that comes your way will be a blessing. And so, all you have to do is give up your resentment and your hatred. I know that's a hard thing to give up, because you have plenty of reason for it. The Future Authoring Program asks you to write about six different dimensions of your life. Um, so it asks you, first of all, to treat yourself as if you're someone that you want to help, and, and that someone that you love and take care of, and someone that you want to help. And then it asks you, well, if you could, if you could organize your life in the best possible manner, and in keeping with those principles we discussed earlier, um, what do you want? What do you want for your career? Like, what do you want? What would make your life meaningful? What do you want for your career? What do you want for your family and from your family? What do you want for an intimate relationship? Um, how are you going to handle? How are you going to take care of your mental and physical health? How are you going to handle drug, drug and alcohol use? It asks you a series of fundamental questions like that to get your mind moving. And then it asks you to write for 15 minutes about what your life could be like 50, three to five years in the future if it was laid out like you were laying out a life for someone you deeply cared about. And so you're asked to write for 15 minutes about that without worrying too much about structure, the structure of the argument or, or, or any grammatical niceties. That, that's put off for later. 
So that gives you a little heaven to aim for, right? It's like, well, if I could have this, my life would be clearly worthwhile, even if I had to put up with a fair bit of suffering along the way. That's what you're trying to construct. And you could think about that as a heaven worth moving towards. And then the second part of the program asks you to write about what your life would be like three to five years down the road if all of your bad habits and nihilistic tendencies and, and proclivity towards resentment and lack of desire to shoulder responsibility, if all your weak points got the upper hand and just augured you into the ground. And everyone knows that. You know what you'd be like if you just let everything slide and, and you'd know what particular hell you were ended up heading towards. And so the, se the second part of the program asks you to write about what your life would be like three to five years down the road if everything just went to hell around you. And so that gives you a hell to avoid and a heaven to strive for. And you need both of those because that's what keeps you properly motivated in life. You see, the thing about disciplining someone, let's say, is that when you, and I see this very clearly when I'm talking to young people, is that I'm really on the side of the person that wants to do something positive with their life, to make their own life better, because I think that's where you should start. You should start by making maximizing the quality of your own life. That's not a selfish thing, or if it is, it's the right kind of selfishness. And that you should figure out how to do that in a way that's of benefit to your friends and your family and your community. And you should take that deadly seriously. And the reason you should do that is because that just makes life better for everyone. And it, it, re it reduces a fair bit of the misery that would otherwise be part and parcel of life. And it makes everything function smoothly. And one of the things I'm really curious about is what the world would be like if everybody decided to do that. Because human beings are really remarkable creatures and we hobble ourselves very badly with deception and resentment and revenge and the desire to make things worse and arrogance and all those all those sins let's say that 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 make us deviate from our true path and our true path should be something like imagine the noblest aim that you can conceptualize and then sacrifice your life to attempting to attain it and there's nothing in that that isn't good for everyone and so apart from the fact that it requires a lot of responsibility i just can't see why Everyone wouldn't do that. And when I'm talking to young people and, you know, shaking my finger and saying, you know, grow the hell up and get mature and take on some responsibility, I'm not saying that because I'm an enemy of the person. I'm saying it because I'm the best friend of the part of them that would really like to walk in the light. And and it's an invitation to walk in the light. And, and it would be remarkable. This is what we need to do, as far as I'm concerned, not only in the West, but in the world at large, but maybe in the West first, is we have to consciously decide that we're going to do everything we can as individuals to walk in the light and to regard that as a noble and heroic endeavor and to make that first and foremost in our lives. And that's what we should be educating young people to do. And they can do that. And so I have dozens of people writing to me and, and talking to me all the time who are saying the same thing. They're saying, look, I've really been trying to get my act together over the last six months I've been trying not to lie which is slightly different than trying to tell the truth right it's a more humble goal to not lie because you can tell when you're lying but you can't necessarily tell when you're telling the truth and I, I've been coming up with a plan and I've been trying to discipline myself and I've been cleaning up my room which is like a nice humble act that, that involves transforming chaos into order and they write and say God things are just working out way better for me it's like whoa do it man that's just you, you keep that up for 15 years and you'll be unbeatable. And that's what we should be convincing young people to be, is to be unbeatable. And not because that's what they should do or because they're bad if they don't, but because there's nothing better you can possibly do with your limited and, uh, your limited and suffering bound life than to aim high and, and sacrifice yourself to the attainment of those goals. So. Once you orient yourself, then you have an obligation, I would say, an obligation to the development of your soul to speak the truth. You have to be oriented properly, though, because the truth is, is something that exists in service to an ideal, an ideal of sorts. Then you can imagine that you could use your language two ways. You can use your language to manipulate the world and to extract from it what you want. So, for example, maybe you go out on a date with someone and you decide that the end goal of the date is to have a sexual partner for the night, and then you can craft your language to manipulate the person into providing you with you with what you want. And that's like an instrumental use of language. But the problem with that, there's many problems with that, but one of them is, is that what if your idea about what you should want is wrong? Like maybe that's not the way to treat someone that you're on a date with, out on a date with. Maybe, maybe you're minimizing and reducing the interactions between you from what could be um, 
a healthy and elevated state of interaction and discourse to something that's that basically the pursuit of impulsive pleasure and not maybe that's not good for you next week and the week after and a month down the road maybe orienting yourself towards impulsive pleasure is a very bad idea remember what happens in pinocchio pinocchio goes to pleasure island and pleasure island is a place where impulsive pleasures can be had at at a moment's notice but what pinocchio discovers along with jiminy cricket that pleasure island is run by masked to totalitarians they're they're all dressed in black you remember and they're they're turning the children and adolescents who are on pleasure island they're depriving them of their voice turning them into braying jackasses and preparing to sell them as slaves to the salt mines and so there's an implication in that story that the pursuit of impulse of pleasure is one route to totalitarianism and slavery and and i believe that so perhaps orienting your language towards the gathering of impulse of pleasure is a miss is a misuse of of your highest gift your the gift of logos the gift of communication the alternative is to orient yourself towards the highest good as we already described and then speak the truth which and you can you can tell when you're doing that because or you can tell when you're not doing that because if you're if you're not telling the truth if you're using someone else's words you're being manipulated in a sense by forces that are behind the scenes you're not using your own words you're the puppet of an ideology or another thinker or your own impulsive desires and you can tell when you're speaking like that because it makes you feel weak it makes you feel weak and ashamed and you can localize that feeling physiologically if you listen to yourself talk you can tell when when you're speaking properly you will experience a feeling of integration and strength and when you're speaking in a deceitful or manipulative manner you'll feel that you're starting to come apart at the seams and what you need to do is practice only saying things that make you feel stronger then you should educate yourself and it's not that easy to do now because you have to find people who can actually tell you mostly what to read and and maybe also how to write because writing is a way of of formulating your thoughts ever more precisely that's why you go to university to learn how to write if you learn if you know how to write you can think if you can think and speak and communicate in writing you're you're unbelievably powerful in the authority manner because arguments move the world forward and if your arguments are tight and well constructed and lucid and well edited and carefully thought through and you have five rationales for everything that you're doing which is what happens if you learn to write properly then you're like a force of nature man no one can take you down